Hello guys, my name is Liam and I am 8DataBits and today I want to show you this device that I designed. It is a memory cell, so it stores uh, bits on these latches here. And as you can see, each bit is two blocks wide and they are tileable, so this can go out as far as you'd like. Uh, this example is 8 bits but obviously you could make it 16, 32, 64 if you want to get crazy. So as I said, uh, this stores information on these latches. So this stores it in a binary manner, and this here is bit zero. So as you can see, if I write to bit zero, we have a one on there. If I write to bit uh, one, we have a one on there, and so on and so forth. Now this isn't just a memory cell though, there's some extra added circuitry. So here we have an adder circuit. So when I pulse this with my handy dandy armor stand pulser, uh, with a two tick pulse, we add one to our circuit. So as you can see here, let's pulse it again, and we get one, and then it goes to two, and then three, and so on down the line. And this will overflow correctly, so once we get up to 255 and add one, it will wrap around to zero. Similarly, we have a subtractor circuit on this side. So if I pulse this, you can see we've subtracted one, subtracted another, and subtracted again and this will also underflow correctly. So if we're at zero and we subtract, it will underflow back to 255. Uh, along with the adder and the subtractor, we also have a write and a read enable line. Uh, and what that allows us to do is either write to or read from this these bus lines here. So these dust, these redstone dust at the top here are both input and output to the circuit. So if we'd like to um, read from the circuit, we can enable that and you can see we're reading out the memory onto the bus line. If we'd like to write to the circuit, that gets a little bit more complex in that we can't actually write zeros. So we can't clear bits in this way. What we can do, however, is come over here to a reset line. So if I pulse this line, you'll see that all the bits have now been cleared. So they're all zero. So we're storing a zero now. Now when we do that, we can come in here and set whatever bits we'd like, then set our write enable which then extends these redstone blocks, which sets the corresponding bits on our latches. And when we're done, we uh, deassert our write enable, and our bus is uh, removed from the latches. So, as you can see, there's a lot of functionality included here, and um, I think it's a pretty useful circuit. Um, I know that I'm going to be using it for a project that I'm doing, um, which hopefully I'll have a video out on fairly soon. Um, yeah, so uh, in this video I'm going to show you basically the, the build of this circuit, as well as a few tiny modifications and how um, some of it works. But I'm going to have another video that goes more in depth on the actual theory of how it works, how latches work, how um, the latches are built, how adders and subtractors work, and a bit of the timing involved in this whole thing. So if you'd like to check out that video, I'll add an annotation and a link in the description. So please check that out if you're interested. For now though, uh, I'm going to head over and we will see how to build two bits of this, which can then be tiled out uh, as far as you'd like. 
Okay guys, here we are at the build platform and as you can see I've laid out the footprint here and each bit is 16 blocks long by 2 blocks wide. And we're going to build two bits next to each other just so you can see how they mesh together. So to start off we go 4, 5 in and put those blocks there, then 4 uh, and there, and then 4, 5, and right there. And we'll do the same here. So that is the base of our 2-bit adder, uh, or 2-bit memory cell. Um, so from there, we'll build up here. So this, on this side, will be part of the subtractor circuit. So that goes there. And on this side is where our adder circuit is going to go. So we're going to start building the redstone for that. This, These repeaters here are part of the uh, reset line. And here, these are the clear, um, the clear circuits for the adder. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the theory of how this adder works, as I said, um, check out my other video on on that. Um, but um, for any, as I described in that video, any of the inputs going into the latch have to be four ticks um, to stop any oscillations from occurring. So we, because these are go in are going to go into the latch, we want to make sure those are four tick um, to basically extend uh, our pulse. So. We'll get those torches there, and then some redstone dust coming up here, and that goes there, there, there. Okay, so this redstone torch, these redstone torches here are going to be part of the clear circuit that uh, for the adder. Um, over here, we'll get started on our subtractor circuit, and that's going to go there. These are the carry lines for the subtractor circuit, and those need to be set at three ticks. So there, these are going to lock our, cl our carry lines, and we have two here. These repeaters go into the inverted side of our latch. So again, as inputs into the latch, we need these to be four ticks. So let's get some dust going here. And torches here. So now, the reason we need these torches here is because if this, uh, as as far as the subtractor circuit goes, if the inverted output is off, we want to lock our carry line. Now the difference between the uh, the nth bit, or in this case the second bit, and the first bit here is that um, we need this block here as part of the clear line for the for the bit before. So with the first bit, obviously we don't have a bit before, so there's no clear line. Um, you can use a block here and just have a redstone repeater into that, um, but for the way that I build it, uh, I just use a dust here, but either way it will work. Now we'll start building the latch. So the actual latch is going to go up here and right there, and then across. So this is the shape of our latch. And this gets a dust here, a repeater there, torch here, two dust on top with a repeater. Then we have a block here, which is eventually going to be our output uh, that we read from, uh, a dust here, and another torch here. So that's the that's our latch right there. Um, and if you want to find out again 
as I said, if you want to find out how this latch works, check out the other video on the theory of this. Um, and we'll just build that again over here on this side. There we go. And there. Torch there. Repeater. Dust. Torch. And repeater. And that is our latch on the second bit. Now let's start finishing off the adder circuit. So the adder circuit comes out here to there, and we'll just build the other side as well. And for the clear part of our, excuse me, the uh, carry part of our adder, we need that to be um, locked when this is off, when, our, when the non-inverted side of our uh, latch is off. So to do that, we'll pull off of there, put a, a repeater there, t uh, dust there, repeater there, and here is our carry uh, signal. So again, that needs to be set at three ticks. And we'll have, that's the input into our latch. So again, that needs to be four ticks. And here is the input to our adder right here. And again, we'll build the same thing for our second bit. There we go. There. And we need to get the signal, the inverse signal off of here. There, and this needs to be set at three. Now you can see our carry bit, excuse me, our carry signal comes through here, comes down this line, and then goes back to our first bit here to clear it. Now, if we want to be able to overflow correctly, we need to do the same thing here at the end. So while technically each bit is two blocks wide, really it the last bit needs to have one extra block for the overflow. So just keep that in mind. And now we'll finish up the uh, subtractor side um, by building the, um, the clear lines. So just like on our adder side, we need to pull a clear line from the next bit. So again, this is our overflow here, and that uh, is technically one block larger uh, because it's coming back from the next bit. Oops. There we go. And there we go. And one more block here. Some dust on top to pull that signal up. And that goes into a block here, whoops, right there. Then we invert that. And finally, we pull this up here. Here we need to use a, a slab because we don't want this torch uh, powering this block and affecting this, this dust and essentially creating an oscillator. So there we get that, and we put a block above here and a block above here, and then uh, repeaters into those blocks. And again, these are inputs to, the, to our latch, so they need to be set at four ticks. So that right there is our adder circuit and our subtractor circuit. The subtractor circuit input is right here. And now we'll start on the read and write of our, uh, the read and write lines of our latches. So uh, here, as I said, this is gonna be our read signal. So this is how we're going to read from that particular bit. So we'll put a block above there and there, and we're gonna invert those. Right next to it is gonna be our write. So these are going to be right next to each other. And we'll put 
two more there. Now we'll have a repeater here to push that signal through, a repeater here into this block, and the same over here. Now the problem that we run into here is that we don't want our bus line constantly being driven with the output of our read. So we need to be able to gate in the read and write to disconnect our memory from the bus line. So the way that we do that is by putting a block here and then a piston above that like so. And now when these pistons extend they will enable or gate in um, any signals from the bus or write from the latch to the bus. So on the other side of this, we'll put a dust here, a repeater here, so that when on our read side, when this piston extends down, this repeater will power this block, which will then flow through to this dust. On the other side, when uh, we write enable, this piston will extend down, this repeater will power this block, which will go to a dust here. And I'll show you how that, that write works in a minute. So we'll just finish up on this side, and we actually need one more here. And again, that goes there, we get a dust here. And the actual bus needs to um, be independent from our read and write. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to have a block here and a block here and then we'll have redstone torch and a block and a block then dust here to invert it another block oops and a block and then we'll have torches here. Now here we need a slab so that we don't interfere, um, th so that this redstone dust doesn't interfere here. And we'll put uh, repeaters there. And finally, a block there and there, and redstone dust. So these, these dusts here are actually our input and output to the bus and to our latch. So uh, if these are powered, then you can see this gets powered, um, but it doesn't go through unless we enable a write. And in the same way, if we enable a read, um, this if this bit is on, this will turn on. So in that way, this bus is bi-directional. So now we just need to put in our actual write circuitry. So to do that, we'll put two redstone blocks like that. And then above them goes a piston like that. And finally, to uh, trigger that piston, we have two redstone torches, like that, and like that. And now you can see, any time a signal comes in here, that signal will flow through, invert, invert, and trigger this piston. Now, obviously, these will will fix these once we uh, once we get this all built. Now the final part is to build the read and write enable. So this is pretty simple. Basically we just have two lines on either side of these pistons with redstone dust on top. And now you can choose either side to be write or read. Um, the way that I've been doing it is just having this side be read. So here you can see 
Uh, this is our reed piston, so we'll put a torch there and a torch there. And for our right piston, a torch there and a torch there. Now, these signals do need to be inverted, so they are active low. So uh, normally the, this redstone dust will need to be on. And then when you'd like to enable a read, you just uh, dis um, bring this line low. And same thing goes with the right. There. Now, as I said, um, with a right, you can't write a zero. So that's what this uh, repeater here is for. So if I pulse that, you can see that turns both of those off. Now that is everything in the build. Uh, a few things that you should be aware of though. I designed this, um, as I said, for a different project. And that project makes use of two tick pulses to control all of this. So as I said, my armor stand uh, pulser here is set up for two tick pulse. Now that is uh, all good for my purposes. However, um, you may need to use longer pulses. Now, if you decide to do longer pulses, then um, you'll have to change a little something. So uh, let me just change the length of the pulse here. So this will give me an eight tick pulse now. Now what you have to be careful of here is that when you input to this line here, and let's just set that. So now you can see our carry line is locked. Now when you input to this line, what happens is that pulse starts, it carries through here, and when this turns on, it comes back through and unlocks our carry line. Now by that time, your pulse needs to have ended. So right now it's set up so that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ticks between the start of the pulse and when it comes back and turns this on. So we need to have the pulse length less than six. So as you can see, if I do, so right now we have um, the value three written in, uh, stored in memory. So if I tick this for eight pulses, you can see we actually subtracted two. So that becomes a problem, obviously. So what you can do is you can actually add extra delay in here. So let me just set that up again. So now we have the same thing, three written, and we pulse it again. And you can see there we just subtracted one, because now we're at two. So this will extend the maximum pulse length that you can give this without it um, taking off too many, uh, subtracting too many. Uh, the same goes with the adder circuit. So the adder circuit is actually uh, one tick longer. So while this was a maximum of six ticks, this is actually a maximum of three ticks, uh, excuse me, seven ticks, but you can add uh, more time here. So, um, that's a, a little bit of a modification if you'd like to use longer ticks. Obviously using a longer tick pulse is going to make this whole thing a lot slower, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm only using two tick pulses. So that should be everything. Now let's just run this through a quick test. Actually let me change my pulser back. We'll change that back to a two tick pulse and we'll come back over here and reset that and let's just test this to make sure it works. So we've got it set for three right now so we'll subtract one to two then one and zero and underflow back to three. 
and we'll test the adder side. And we get, oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, we had three, and then we overflowed to zero. And actually, I do see one error. This should be set to four. And we'll pulse it again. And we get one from zero, two, three, and back to zero. So that all works. And here, let's just, well, we'll write to it just to double check that this works. So there we have that set. And we'll do that. And as you can see, we wrote in that value. And we'll remove those. And the read works. So that's the full build there. And if you'd like to learn a little bit of how this works, the theory behind the latch and the theory behind the subtractor and the adder, please check out my other video. Um, but for now, I think that's going to do it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.